will be going back a bit in history now with um, the post re reconstruction of Dresden and the question of authenticity that rose from this reconstruction. Um, Dresden is, is in East Germany and is the capital of uh, the state of um, free state of Saxony. Uh, prior to the World War II, uh, Dresden was known as the Florence and on the elbow or the jewel box uh, of Germany for its exceptional Baroque and Rococo architecture. It had a unique skyline with various churches, academies and palaces. However, the greater part of Dresden was destroyed during the Second World War. Um, this wonderful map shows uh, the extent of the destruction um, with to the south of the river, the big blue area, which shows the destroyed or badly damaged area, um, which is the historic city center of Dresden, and um, the residential areas in green, which were also quite destroyed. Surprisingly, the industrial areas uh, in, with, with a black outline were barely destroyed, but that's another topic. Um, um, however, it was also soon decided to restore the city's historic appearance, uh, which, start, which started a process uh, which lasts several decades and still continues today. Uh, it was often halted uh, by financial issues. The clearance uh, of the destroyed area underwent relatively quickly, um, as can be seen here, which is a picture of relatively the same view towards the train station um, just shortly after the destruction and then four years later with the area nearly completely cleared off um, any buildings. Um, by 1964, uh, they already um, finished reconstructing the Swinger Palace, which holds a large art gallery. Um, this was followed by the reconstruction of some other major monuments like the Semper Opera, which burned out completely on the inside. Uh, the exterior um, did uh, survive the fire and uh, they restored everything really wonderful and even um, made a replica of a grand drape, which is hand painted. <laughs> Took several decades to just do this uh, one drape in the end. Um, but it was also decided to completely demolish or other monuments in favor of living space or modern um, structures. Um, Dresden's current restructured city center consists of a mixture between uh, modern architecture, mainly from the 50s or 60s, uh, fake historic facades uh, in a historic setting, as well as a few archaeological reconstructions and a few remaining originals. Um, in the beginning, the city center was still covered in rubble, uh, which has to be removed so they could start a new building, uh, start building a new living space. Um, some of these areas are still green areas uh, in hopes for future reconstruction of the buildings uh, that once stood there. Um, the Church of Our Ladies is one of the ma latest major reconstructions in Dresden. Um, and one of the accompan accompanied with the most controversies and discussions. Um, before its destruction, uh, it was one of the most important central hall buildings in Dresden with its bell-shaped sandstone dome, um, which was a unique structure by the architect uh, Georg Baer, uh, built between 1725 and 1743. Uh, it dominated Dresden's cityscape for about 200 years. Its significance was also on a religious scale. Um, after the Reformation, it became a symbol of the Lutheran Church. The building collapsed two days after the bombing in February 1945, with only a few parts, uh, as you can see, left and right uh, remaining. Um, also, it uh, appeared uh, apparently survived the direct attack and the firestorm. The extreme heat uh, had, that had been generated weakened the fabric so much that uh, it couldn't carry the weight of the dome, which was 12,000 tons, and uh, the dome collapsed. Um, it remained a ruin for the next 45 years, uh, which partly caused the conflict about its reconstruction. Um, the large pile of rubble was left in its position. The outer area was enclosed by walls and roses were planted on the pile of rubble. Uh, it was only thanks to the persistence of uh, the Dresden Institute for Preservation and Preservation of Monuments and the Saxon State Custodian Professor Hans Nadler and the protests of the re residents that um, saved the uh, 
saved, um, so that the ruins were not removed. Um, the lack of economic capacity, uh, post-war discussions of pro appropriate architecture, and the new arising ideology debate of, of Dresden as an emerging major social city uh, stopped prior attempts to reconstruct. The ruined prank councils are a monument of warning as well as a place of silent protest against war and conflict. On the 13th February 1990, the local initiative uh, call from Dresden was founded for the reconstruction of the church. Um, thanks to a worldwide response uh, and support, they managed to raise enough money to finally reconstruct the church. And as well as also this international support that makes it a place of solidari solidar solidarity. I can't pronounce this word. <laughs> solidarity of a higher level. Um, but they were also opponents. Um, with all this damage uh, done to the buildings, the reconstruction could only be a historic looking replica uh, or a new building uh, of the original with, uh, with new adaptations like air conditioning, a heating system or a lift. And uh, people that found their peace with this church in the ruins um, would rather have this place remaining as a war memorial. Um, the reconstruction work were then essentially based on three guiding principles. Um, George, Be George Georg Beer's church uh, should be rebuilt using its original structural substance to the largest extent possible in accordance with the original construction plans. This should be done with the aid of um, modern technology as well as the theories and methods uh, of structural engineering and physics valid today, while giving due consideration to all the requir requirements needed for the usage of the building in the 21st century. The work began uh, with clearing and shifting through the rubble according to archaeological principles in 1993. The entire area was divided into grid squares um, to allow better orientation and to document every single stone. And each find was marked, numbered, um, photographed and drawings of the position of the stone as well as neighboring stones was uh, made um, to um, for pre preliminary identification and then the digital records of these finds were evaluated by photogrammetry, uh, which enabled a later revision and correction of any issues that might arise. Um, the large mound, which was about uh, 22,000 cubic meters, um, was cleared in 17 months. Uh, 8,390 facade stones uh, from the interior walls and exterior walls, uh, as well as ceiling stones, were uh, saved, as well as n over 90,000 backup blocks um, and a large number of other objects, including um, the badly damaged uh, pinnacle cross. Uh, the use of the original fabric uh, will show the history of the church uh, for a long time with the clear difference between the darkened stone to, uh, to the light stone, as can be seen here. That's the church now. Uh, so after the 60 years, it was uh, reopened in 2005 uh, with uh, approximately 45% of its original fabric that has been reused. Um, the church represents the cooperation work of not only Germany, but also former allied countries like the UK and Poland. Uh, they supported the reconstruction and donated the cross or parts of the lanterns. And it was not only the exterior that was uh, reconstructed, but also the interior with these wonderful painted ceilings and pinnacles, as well as um, a replica of the Silverman organ, which was uh, took quite a while to um, to uh, replicate. Um, but the issue still remains with um, the church appearing in its 18th century architecture, uh, but only has been built in the 90, uh, 1990s. And even with the archaeological reconstruction, some changes have been made. Um, has different mortar has been used and steel beams have been introduced to uh, correct a statically mistake which uh, Georg Baer did uh, within the dome. And so the question is, can it still be counted as a historic monument? And does the, this reconstruction not omiss, is, not, is it not an omission of the part of the history of this building? Um, lastly, I just want to uh, give us more insight in the ongoing reconstruction and preservation works in Dresden with a look into the lapidarium. The lapidarium is a 
um, depot in the old Zion's church, which also was destroyed in the war. Uh, it's a depot one by the Dresden City Council. Uh, it's a collection of uh, building features, mostly statues and decorative elements from all over Dresden. It was started by an antiquities group in the early 20th century. Also, their entire paper archive was lost during the war. The post-war clearance and modern re de redevelopment in Dresden brought an increase in material um, that was deposited, uh, which in the beginning was stored in various depots. After standing redundant, the church um, was repurposed as a long-term archive for all finds in 1994. Um, at the moment, uh, the depot presents a mixture of columns, statues, decorative external features, gravestones, um, milestones, as well as internal features, such as doors, tiles, or entire wall panels that has been removed from the buildings before they were demolished because of too, uh, because they were too much damaged. Um, the aim of the lapidarium is, however, not just to archive and document this, these fabrics. They restore, or if the restoration is impossible, create copies of the features, as can be seen with the uh, figures at the um, bottom picture, uh, which is the black ones are the originals and the white ones are the copies. The copies have not been used because uh, the custodians say that they were not accurate enough, uh, which I couldn't see at the point when I visited, but uh, they are the experts. Um, so, um, all these features are to be repositioned in their original location and um, or the building fabric that is to be in reintegrated either in reconstructed buildings or to be displayed in a modern structure um, in close proximity to its original position. So if um, they can't rebuild the building and they were going to build a new um, modern structure there, they're going to reintegrate some of the features they have in the archive, where they definitely know it comes from this position. So uh, they're very de dedicated to preserve and restore as much as possible of Dresden's historic fabric and not to let it be forgotten in an archive. Uh, the lapidarium is also accessible to the public, so you just have to give them a call and you can go in there, have a look around, or they give small tours um, to people. Um, so in conclusion, uh, the reconstruction of Dresden is an ongoing process. Uh, while they don't actively try to hide the fact that the greater part of the city center is uh, in fact the modern structures, uh, they do give the appearance of being of historical origin. I personally cannot say or cannot fault them for their decision to uh, do these uh, historic reconstructions um, as it definitely brought back the cultural capital uh, and created a wonderful place to live and to visit just as a tourist. Um, from an archaeological point of view, it is just a pretty facade, but uh, Dresden invested a lot of time, effort and money to follow the originals as close as possible um, and integrate the modern architecture. Um, it was probably not an easy decision for them, as uh, the authentic authenticity question was quite early and is a constant question. Uh, but so far, the continuous integration of historic fabric and modern structures or the, the reconstruction of buildings has been really well executed and I hope they will continue this.